Hi everybody, uh, Russell here. Uh, welcome to our Kaya Level 2 EdgeFit uh, program. Uh, first of all, a huge congratulations to everybody that wrote uh, and passed Kaya Level 1 in the um, September 2020 uh, writing. It was no mean feat, guys. It was a, a difficult paper, not an easy paper by any means. Um, you know, having chatted to the guys at Kaya, you know, it was the first time that this paper was written on the new uh, Kaya Level 1 syllabus, so a difficult paper. We weren't exactly sure what to expect. Uh, some of the expectations were slightly different to what uh, the guys had seen in the practice papers. I'm, I'm hearing that quite a lot. Um, but if you are here in Kaya Level 2, well, then you're through that. And huge congrats and well done. Well done to you all. What I plan to do in this uh, Kai Level 2 introductory video is to have a little bit of a look at the Kai Level 2 syllabus, have a look a little bit at the Kai Level 2 program, okay? Uh, look at the EDGE program, what we plan to offer, what we plan to provide to the, to the guys, okay? And uh, let's get ourselves going. Okay, first of all, let's start off with a little bit of a general intro. Of course, as you know, guys, nothing's changed um, from what we... Uh, spoke about when we spoke about uh, Kai level one. This is the same study time approximately uh, that you would need to have put in for Kai level one. You know, the Kaya Association talks about 200 to 250 hours. Okay, uh, that's a lot. Okay, um, and keep in mind we are towards the end of October now. Okay, um, so there's not a whole lot of time to get all of it done. We've got October end of October, I suppose, November, December, Jan, and then we start to write early March. And obviously, I always like to leave a month free at the end of the program for revision and practice papers. Okay, good. So 200, 250 hours, I always like to err a little bit on the conservative side and to go towards uh, closer towards the 250 hours. Okay, let's have a quick peek at what exam you can expect here, guys. Okay. A four-hour paper, just like you had in Kai Level 1, okay? The difference over here between Kai Level 1 and Kai Level 2 is that in Kai Level 2, the paper is now broken down into two distinct parts. Part number one, or section one, is 100 multiple choice questions, two hours, and guys, that is stock standard for you guys because you did that in Kai Level 1. You know what to expect over there. Same story, let's do a little bit of the maths quite quick. So you've got 100 and... 20 minutes, which is your two hours, divided by your 100 marks. Okay, the math is easy, if not pretty. 72 seconds per multiple choice question. And those people that have just come out after having written Kai Level 1 will know that that is quick. You've got to really, you've got to move. You've got to move. It's, it's, it's a quick, uh, quick time. Okay, now the if you like multiple choice, well, the good news for you is that Section 1 Okay, we'll call it, for just for argument's sake, we'll call that the morning paper, okay, makes up 70% of the total 100% of the marks. So the majority of the marks are going to come from the morning paper. I'm going to show you the breakdown of that in a second, but that's where the, the majority uh, of the marks are going to be coming from. Okay, again, you get to take yourself a nice half an hour break, well deserved after writing section one, and you move through to section number two. Okay, section number two is what we call constructed response. Okay, for those guys that are part of the Kaya Stackable Credentials Program, in other words, they've come straight through from CFA level three and they've skipped Kaya level one. Well done to you guys. Okay, um, and you are familiar from uh, CFA level three with the, the, this, this term called constructed response or the CR paper. Okay, and constructed response, and I'm going to talk about it as we go through this video, everyone says, oh, that's essays, long, long, nice, difficult, complicated, Englishy uh, essays, and that's the furthest from the truth, and I'll discuss it all with you just to make sure that we have a good sense of what to expect from constructed response. Okay, again, it's a two-hour paper. Okay, and that makes up the balance of the 30% of your total marks. Generally speaking, you are going to have three uh, multi-part uh, questions in this constructed response paper. The 30% will be made up of three questions, okay, 10%, 10%, and 10%. There's your, there's your breakdown. Okay. Um, and I'm going to discuss this much, much more as we go through this particular video. Okay. When's your exam window? 8th of March till 19th of March 2021. A nice, generous time. And guys, please remember, 
okay? Um, the earlier you book your exam time, the more likely you are to get the exact exam date that you want. And I'm, I'm sure everybody would like closer towards the end of the exam window, giving them a little bit more time to study. So remember, guys, the earlier that you book, the greater the chance you have of getting your the, the exact uh, time that you have uh, requested. Okay. Um, we get a lot of questions from, from candidates. Okay. When they registered, um, this thing called online proctoring did not come up as an option. Okay, that's correct. It, it shouldn't. It won't. Okay, Kai are holding back a little bit, guys. And what they're doing, uh, and rightly so, is that they are, you know, they've said they're not quite sure what will happen in terms of COVID by March 2021 or slightly before that. So they're not offering online proctoring just yet. Okay, um, however. Uh, if closer to the time we see that uh, it's not it's not not possible to write in the normal way that Kai writes via the Pearson exam centres, okay, um, then yes, they will make that option available the online proctoring. But but please, when you go and register now, you will not see it. Don't be alarmed. That that's uh, exactly what is uh, how they've planned it thus far. Okay. Let's have a look at the topic weights. And guys, just before I talk about the topic weights, what I want to talk about is how has Kaya level two change because remember, guys, this is the first time that you are going to be seeing the Kaya level two syllabus. And I feel I do feel a little bit bad for those guys that perhaps uh, were impacted negatively by COVID and couldn't write Kaya level two up until now, um, but had studied all the Kaya level two work because you're going to find it's a massive, massive difference between what it was and what it is. What what Kaya have done? Okay, um, and I think fantastically so is they've now split the Chi level one and two syllabuses quite, quite, quite distinctly down the middle. Level one is what they're going to call what they call their bottom up approach or the analyst approach. Okay, and what they do in level one, as I'm sure by now you know, okay, is they they focus specifically on the various asset classes, things like, as you know, real assets, things, hedge funds, private equity, structured. Um, products, all the good stuff over there, and they do a deep dive into those particular asset classes. And you've done that. Okay, done. Ticks finished. Okay, moving on to Chi Level 2, what used to happen in the past is you would see those asset classes again. So when you looked at your Level 2 topics in the past, you would see, okay, real assets, hedge funds, private equity, structured products, all the stuff would be repeated, but on a much greater detail level, much more complex. Um, knowing full well that you have covered it already in level one. And that's why the guys batted a little bit level one this time, because what they did is they took all those nice topics from Kai level two in the past and they, and they pushed them into level one. So hedge funds became quite a difficult topic now in level one, as did private equity, etc., because a lot of it was being pulled from the old Kai level two syllabus into the new Kai level one syllabus. Why do they do that? Because they wanted Chi Level 2 now to be a top-down approach. They call it an allocator approach. Okay, um, and that's obviously, by the way, that, 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 that name, allocators, uh, is what they've called their textbook as well. Okay, good. And what they're doing over here is they're looking in Level 2 particularly how all the asset classes interact with each other. Okay. Um, they're looking to put all the portfolios together. They're looking at risk in a much greater and a more meaningful manner. Liquidity is being involved as well. Um, it's a really fantastic syllabus, guys. Very exciting. And I, and I think the guys will get a lot more out of it now um, than uh, perhaps uh, in the past. But a really a fantastic syllabus. But on the downside, of course, guys, okay, it's a bigger syllabus. Okay, my sense is it's quite a bit bigger than it was in the past. Uh, a little bit more complicated. We can have to work really, really hard, guys, but that doesn't scare anybody on this team, not the guys that I've worked with thus far, okay, um, and I'm sure we're going to be fine. But I just want to scare you a little bit before we unscare you, is just to, 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 to know that from when we start our program um, this coming week, uh, first uh, uh, a set of topics is going to be released um, uh, uh, I think 3rd or 4th of November. I'm going to go through that all with you guys. Um, we're going to have to work really, really hard, really, really hard, get, get involved quite quickly. And the release rate, okay, is going to be quite quick, quite rapid. And, and, and I'm going to beg of you guys that we keep up from the start, work 
uh, consistently throughout, and we're going to be completely fine and kill this paper come March 2021. Okay, let's have a brief look at at the topics now. What are the what are the topics? Okay, ethics regulation in ESG is your first one, and bad news for the guys okay, that were hoping for a freebie, because what happened in the past? Okay, all that they did in the past for ethics is they took exactly your syllabus that came through from Chi Level One and they plopped it into Chi Level Two, which of course, as you guys all know, it's the six standards from the standards of professional conduct. That's gone. Okay, so ethics, there, will, there is nothing. If you're looking for anything on the standards of professional conduct, okay, standards, what used to be uh, for Chi Level One standards, one through all the way till six, completely taken out your syllabus. What is there? It's still a bit of CFA kind of material over there. It's called the AMC guys. That's called the Asset Manager Code. That is in there now under ethics. There's quite a bit of in terms of regulation, and then there's, I think, two chapters on ESG, which is very topical as well. Now, this first topic, ethics, regulation, and ESG, it's only going to be found in the constructed response part of your paper. In other words, you'll find no ethics, regulation, or ESG in the first part of your paper, in the MCQs. Okay, I'm going to skip all the way down, guys, to topic number nine, current and integrated topics, and what are these? Okay, these are topics that are going to change every year for the most part. They knew, okay, they're not necessarily all talking about alts specifically, okay, they knew they're interesting, they're fresh topics, lovely stuff coming out of here. There's things like blockchain in there, um, you know, all that kind of good stuff. It's new, it's fresh, um, fantastic stuff. And again, this is only going to come in the afternoon paper, okay, in your constructed response paper. Okay, and as I said, guys, as I, as I promised, I will talk a little bit about a little bit more about constructed response as we go uh, through this particular video. All right, the rest of it, topics two through till eight. And by the way, I don't want to scan anyone, and I'll show you this as we go forward. But what you're going to have for the remaining, from from topics one through till eight, there's five chapters, five chapters, five. I don't know if they did this on purpose. Five, five. It's nice and consistent. Five, five, five. So by the time you hit chapter eight, which is the end of the effect of, of, of the textbook, the Wiley textbook, you've now had 40 chapters and current and integrated topics is another eight. We've got 48 chapters to get through, guys. Okay, so we're going to work. <laughs> okay, now when I look at the other topics over here, guys, okay, between from topic two all, through, all the way through to topic eight, okay, another question for constructed response. Remember we said there's likely to be three questions in the constructed response afternoon paper. One will be from ethics, one will be from current issues, okay, and the third one will be is a is a gamble. Anywhere from topic two all the way through to topic eight. In the old syllabus, in the old Kyle <coughs> level two syllabus, it was nice and easy because you almost knew at question number three was going to come from either hedge funds or private equity. But always, they always seem to do that. But now, and again, guys, this is the challenge, okay, with a brand new syllabus. Okay, this is not going to be our challenge. We don't know how they're going to ask the questions. Um, you know, now that they've had the chance to change the syllabus, they may well be changing the way that they ask the questions. It's a little bit of a gamble, okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, as we go through this, I'm going to give you my approach to avoiding it being a gamble and to giving it a little bit more, a little bit more certainty. Okay, now, from the balance of the, of, of, of the, the topics, okay, two all the way through till eight, okay, there's your 70% coming over there. 70% and, it may, and the makeup of it, guys, is going to be 100 multiple choice questions, which is equal to 70% of the total mark. And as you can see, guys, the range is all in between all of those is between 8 and 12, these remaining seven topics. Okay, it's between 8 and 12, if you took the average of that would be 10, 10% uh, and by the way, that's how you get to your 70% allocation. Everyone comfortable with that? Okay, and th th that is the, the MCQ section. Okay, now a brief, brief look, I'm going to look at it in a bit more detail as we go, go, go through this, but a, a brief look at what's in here now. You're dealing with models, all your, all your different kinds of models, credit models, all the good stuff over there. Uh, institutional asset owners, by the way, that's quite reminiscent of what it was in the past. Investment policies, 
as you can see, we're looking a bit more top down. There's risk and risk management, methods for alternative investing, how you access the investments, due diligence and manager selection, volatility and complex strategy. So, you know, the guys always say to me, well, kind of choose a completely new syllabus. And I say, yes, it is. But remember, alts is alts is alts. Okay. Now, if you look in the past syllabus, where well, we used to do due diligence as a separate topic related specifically to things like private equity, a new due diligence relating specifically to things like hedge funds. It's all back in here, but they, they, they've put in a much nicer way and it's looking at it much more from a top-down point of view. But a lot of the information, guys, is what it was in the past. Okay, because, you know, uh, this is this is called Kaya Chartered Alternative Investments and we're dealing with alternatives. So you can't, alternatives haven't changed that materially um, this year to last year that you've got a completely new syllabus with brand new everything stuff. It's pr predominantly the same stuff, but it's repackaged some into level two, some into level one, and in a much cleaner and neater and more fantastic manner. That's my two cents worth. Okay, I'm very happy with the changes, albeit that as a prep provider, I've got to go and do a whole set, new set of notes. It's my honor and my pleasure. And uh, and I can tell you something, we all learn as we go through them um, again another time. So no stress on that point at all. Let us have a quick look, guys, at uh, the textbooks and the information. Topics one through eight, okay, they are all covered in the Wiley textbook. It's a, it's a fantastically written textbook. Okay, called um, an allocator's approach, and of course that's very related to uh, kind of to a change in syllabus. You've got 40 chapters over there, and you can see over there, guys, that that's going to be from one through to eight. Your remaining eight chapters that come through from current and integrated topics, they are what we call the Kai readings. They're available on the website, um, and of course we'll provide notes for those as well. What else does Kaya give you? Okay. They still include in their stuff the Standards of Practice Handbook from the CFA. I wouldn't spend too much time on that. We've done that in Level 1, but it, it is a provided resource, okay? Then they give you the eight Kaya Level 2 Current and Integrated Topics. Yes, that, just, that comes from over there. They give you the Wiley textbook. We'll talk about that one in a second. You've got the handbook. Very valuable, guys. Okay, which tells you exactly how things are going to work. But you've seen it, a lot of it already in level one. What time must you come for your exam? How to book your exam? What you can bring, what you can't bring, all the good stuff over there. Very useful resource. I'm going to skip this one in a second. We'll come back to that. The study guide goes through each and every single learning objective. And then you've got your CHI level two. You've got your workbook. Okay, and what is your workbook? Okay, your workbook is, it's a fantastic resource from Kaya. Okay. Um, that goes to each and every single uh, topic, okay, from top to bottom, other than, of course, uh, uh, topics one and two, which are the asset manager code. And what it does is it goes to all of them and provides some nice questions for you. Um, and because this is the first time that we are going to be doing, um, um, the first time that, we, that we'll, we'll be looking at uh, the syllabus, as will everybody, Okay, um, I'm going to be making a lot more use. You're going to be see, you'll be seeing a lot more of those questions coming up um, that I'm going to be making use of, just to make sure that we've completely covered everything that we need to cover. Okay, that's the, and that's coming from the Kai workbook. It's a, a wonderful resource. I'll try and uh, cut and paste those into our um, uh, into the Google Classroom for you guys, so it's nice and easily accessible. You don't have to spend too much time looking for them or going all over the show. Okay. Now, the Kai Level 2 study guide, that study guide over here, okay, gives you all the learning objectives in detail. And what I've done is obviously, as you know, um, in, the, in the front of all of our notes, what we do is we provide um, those learning objectives for you. Then we go through all of our notes and then we provide some questions uh, at the back end of the notes. Those are our own questions, obviously. What I've done, and obviously this is when I say we're trying to de-risk the fact that we're not completely sure what will be asked in this paper, is I go through all those learning objectives and I make sure that we've got something on them in the notes, okay? Um, and that is your guarantee, guys, because no matter how they're going to ask this paper, they can ask it um, in any which way, okay? But as long as you have gone through all those learning objectives and you've said, okay, well, one of the things, let's let's give you an, an example of one of the learning objectives. Uh, I'll just pick one from uh, uh, that, that comes to mind. 
demonstrate knowledge of blockchain technology. Now, if you are able to do that, it doesn't matter how they ask that question, you are covered. Okay, so I work very deeply with the learning objectives as a way of covering ourselves to make sure we have got a complete sense of the entire syllabus because they can, they're not allowed to in a sense. They can't ask you anything other than what's in their learning objectives as they provide to us in the study guide. But there's a bit of bad news, okay? Um, and if one has to uh, granularize it, okay, into how many specific bits of knowledge they want you to know from the learning objectives, guys, that is 1,051. Okay, no, no, as I say, no mean, no mean feat. We've got to learn all 1,051 specific learning objectives. And we will. Okay, once we know what work is, uh, uh, we need to do, we'll do it. Okay, but yeah, but we get that from the study guide. The study guide's available to you guys as well. No need to go through that. I've provided that for you. Now, the next big question that I get asked is, do we need to buy the textbook? Now, I heard a webcast uh, by uh, uh, Bill Kelly, um, the head of Kaya, um, who said he was attending a meeting with uh, one of the guys from, um, I'm not sure what you call them, Kaplan or Schwiz or Schwaz or something like that. And um, he said that the guy, uh, I'm only repeating his stuff, so I'm not talking about anything bad or good about anybody. Okay, I'm just repeating what I heard in the webcast. And what he said was uh, the, the, the prep provider got up and said, no need whatsoever to buy the Wiley textbook, which he, <laughs> which he took a bit of exception to, and rightly so. And he got up and he said he'd like a rebuttal, which he uh, said, you know, um, uh, yes, maybe the notes from the prep provider may be able to get you through. Um, he's not sure. He doesn't know enough about it. But... Uh, very valuable textbook. And guys, I need to echo those sentiments as well. Do you need the textbook to pass this paper? No. Is it a valuable resource? Of course it is. It's a, it's a, I mean, I, guys, I, I've gone through the textbook myself. Um, it's written by the, some top, top class guys, really. I mean, I, they, they don't need my approbation by any means, okay? But really a top class bunch of guys and well written. Um, and, you, and, and, and whenever, like, for example, you know, you must always remember that any prep provider, and I'm not knocking anybody, not myself included, but we give you a summary, okay? Um, now, a summary is never going to be as detailed as the actual material. Now, if you want more on it, you go back to the textbook. Do you need to buy the textbook right now to pass this paper? No. Okay. Is it a nice idea at $125? Never a bad idea to have a copy available. Okay. Um, and... Uh, uh, in addition, what, what Kai have done, which is, I think, a fantastic initiative, is um, they've got a digital platform now that you can get, you can buy this textbook. Um, it, it, I think it's administered via Wiley Efficient Learning uh, for $125, the same as if you'd buy yourself a hard copy of it. Um, and you can do that uh, online as well, have a copy of it. Never, never, I would never call that guy by any means a waste of money. And I think it's a lovely resource uh, to, to buy. Um, and again, having said that, are our notes sufficient? Uh, I would have to say yes, that they, that they are. Okay, just remember guys, uh, I had a student that phoned me uh, about a week ago saying they're so excited that uh, Kaya have introduced a whole new way of learning. And I said, you know, just be careful. And I, again, not to, to upset anybody, but remember what you are buying with this digital platform and what you're not getting. What you are getting is really just guys a digital copy of the Wiley textbook. Not, it's not a whole lot. There's a little bit of a calendar in there as well. Um, a little bit of odds and ends, but it's not a complete new system of men of, of how things work and, and, and uh, all good things like that. It's really just a digital copy, which is fantastic um, of what you would get had you bought the textbook itself. And again, the cost of that is $125, a very worthwhile purchase notwithstanding. Okay, let's flip the page over here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, guidance on constructed response. Okay, we've spoken about this a little bit already. There's going to be three questions in exam two if they keep it, keep it the same way as they did in the past. Um, for those that don't like to type onto a computer, bad news for you, you will need to type it onto a computer. Okay, um, but remember, and I, I can tell you this by experience, I wrote the paper a couple years ago, CHI level two, and I wrote it... Um, uh, here in Santon, Johannesburg, with a, a, a group of about seven or eight other guys, okay? Um, and we all sat down together to write 
at approximately the same time, because remember the constructed response paper is a two-hour paper. We sat down throughout the paper. After about an hour, I'm typing furiously, okay, and I'm the only person that's left there. The other seven uh, people had left. Um, and the truth is that what they do, and it's, it, it's, it, it really is, it's, it's a nice system. I, I enjoy it because it really, it, it's able then to test if you know the work, not if you're able to type quickly or you're able to answer quickly. But two hours is way more time than you need. So just to give you a bit of comfort, guys, it's way more time than you need, okay, to type in your answers. So even if you're a very slow typist, a, a non-proficient typist like myself, you're going to be completely fine. Okay, good. Now, when when they talk about constructed response, people say, oh, essays. No, not essays, constructed response. It's a response that is constructed in a certain manner to give the solution. Nothing more than that. Okay. Um, and each and generally speaking, how do I know that it's not an essay? Because each constructed response of your three, okay, we'll go on that basis, is worth 10 marks. Okay, and it's broken down typically into maybe four or five sub questions. Now, if you have a look at that, okay, you, you, you can expect plus or minus 15 questions or smaller questions, shorter questions. This is not an essay. They're asking you pointed questions which you need to answer. It's not an essay. You can generally answer them in one or two paragraphs. Okay, and, and, and the good news is, guys, for, for all the Shakespearean students out there, bad news for you, but good news for, for students like me who battle to put a sentence together and they don't really know where the comma should be going most of the time. Okay, You're not, you don't need full sentences. You're not penalized for poor grammar and bad spelling. Okay, all that kind of good stuff. So there we go. No, don't stress if you are not uh, an eloquent, eloquent writer. I once had a, a, a guy, he was the head of, I can't give you too much more than that, guys, but he headed up, uh, he was the, the head economist at a major, major international operation um, and wrote beautifully, absolutely beautifully, but came to me because he had failed CFA level three already. Um, and I said to him, do me a favor, he has a question for me, write it out and let me see, where, let me see if we can spot anything that uh, obvious comes to the, comes to the eye. I mean, his writing was, I mean, it was just, it was beautiful, eloquent. But I said to him, I said, first of all, you've gone over time. Second of all, you've written me an essay. Third of all, you've got about two out of 15 for this answer. Okay, guys, and I'm going to teach you how to go through constructive response as we go through them. Okay, we want little dots, little point, point form, quickly, easily. No fancy grammar, no fancy spelling, and no full sentences. Just dot, 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 and answer the question quickly and effectively. I taught this particular guy how to answer in that manner, and he passed with flying colors the second time. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing this time as well. Okay, um, and we'll talk about this as we go. Um, just some more guidance on constructed response. Okay. A little bit of other information, guys, and I'm, 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 I'm not going to spend too much time on this with you guys, particularly because we have dealt with this when we dealt with this in CHI Level 1. Your calculator policy, we generally use the Texas Instruments. Okay, you can use the BA2+, Plus, all the professional. That's what most of the providers are teaching on at the moment. Remember, of course, you can also use the, the HP, the 12C, the rectangular one. Okay. When we talk about our approach to work, and those that have been with me before know this, okay? We talk about the the the, the four C's, okay, um, okay, and the four C's. Let's have a quick look. What what are those four C's? Okay, the first one. Okay, we'll, we'll deal we'll deal with them. Okay, uh, one at a time, slowly, slowly. Okay, the first one I talk about is consistency. That consistency, guys, as you're going to see when I go through the schedule is a damning consistency. It's an everyday work. It's an every week work. We don't stop. We keep working. But when I say consistency, okay, I don't want you to be working four hours a night. I had one guy that came through. I was, I was wildly amused. He came through and he said, can he present his study schedule to me? I said, with pleasure. And uh, he, he gets up at, at, at 3.30 a.m. I said, I, I said, to do what? So he, so he, 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 he gyms at that early hour till 4.30. He has his shower, a uh, bit of downtime till 5 a.m. Most people downtime is still in their beds at that time. 
but I don't want to say anything. He then gets to work. He works till 4 p.m. because he gets to work early, so he's able to leave her a little bit earlier. Gets home uh, 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 and has dinner by 6 p.m. and then he works till about 11. Puts in five or six hours a night. This was in January. He said, what do I think? I said, I think you'll be dead by February. Okay, so no. When I say constancy, I'm not talking about mad hours. I'm talking about one hour a day. So about an hour and a half a day. Okay, and a little bit of extra time on the weekends. Okay, but family is important. Relaxing time is important. Downtime is important. Okay, um, if you are eating well on your, and you're on a nice um, diet plan, <clears throat> please keep to that. Okay, if you're not, well then just keep eating what you're eating. Okay, same story. If you're exercising, please keep exercising. Okay, um, if you're not, maybe it's a good time to start. If not, well, just uh, keep going. Okay, um, but look after yourselves, guys. And when we say consistency, okay, I'm talking about okay, a consistent, uh, an everyday work. Okay, we look at my second C, which is commitment. And now you can see why I love constructed response because I have no idea how to spell. Okay, and what does the commitment say? Okay, you know, you guys know you're in level two. I don't need to talk too much more about commitment, other than just to say it needs okay a whole batch of commitment. And I always talk when I talk about commitment, it's your commitment. It's the commitment of your wives, husbands, girlfriends, boyfriends, spouses, um, other halves, better halves, worse halves, cats, dogs, uncles, aunts, cousins, whoever you happen to be dealing with, that have got an important impact and uh, 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 on, on your lives. Have a chat with them and tell them that you 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 have committed to pass uh, Kai level two. It's going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, and just it's I always find it's easier if you have um, already discussed this with your team um, and you've got their buy-in that it makes the process so much easier. It's so difficult to pass Kai level two as well as have to fight with everybody. And your 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 other half is always saying, "Are you studying again? Didn't you study yesterday?" Okay. Um, are you, you going to study again tomorrow? Do you know tomorrow is Saturday? Okay. And my answer is get there by and early um, and avoid um, anything further than that. Next is concentration. When I talk about concentration, okay, uh, I'm, I'm talking more about focus than concentration, but I needed a C, not an F, so we, we made it a C for concentration. And guys, I always say, Focused work, a, a strong hour is better than four hours. When, when, when my students fail me and say, Phew, last time I put in five hours, and I say, Well, what did you study? Um, uh, we did, we did, um, you know, that section on, uh, uh, I think it's fixed income, backwards, backward, what's the word? I say backward induction. Yes, that's the one. And I'm thinking, No, rather, guys, I'm not knocking anybody. You know me better than that, but rather put in one strong hour than four weak hours. If you come home at seven o'clock from work and you're exhausted, put yourself, give you, have something to eat, lie down on the couch for half an hour, and then put your hour in. If you can't do that and you're far too exhausted, go to bed. Okay, but don't try and push through and get extra hours that are not focused and concentrated hours. And my last C is calm, guys. We spoke about this a little bit earlier. Keep calm, keep relaxed, look after yourselves. Okay, it's just Kaya. It's not, this is not, uh, dare I say, the other C for COVID. Okay, but look after yourselves, guys. It's not, you know, just uh, family comes first, kids come first, wives, husbands. Okay, you know, hopefully everyone can work together in achieving this goal of yours. But look after yourself. Exercise. Go to movies. Go to, uh, I don't know if any movies are open anymore, but if they are, go. Go to the theatre. Okay, go for a bike ride. Go for a run. Whatever each person does there, go to the gym. Whatever people do, you keep up with that and look after yourselves. Okay, we move down. Dot number three, guys. Equations must be learned. We saw that before. There's nothing. Um, hopefully, this time I will have my formula sheet out in a good time for you. Okay. Um, very little, uh, a lot of guys were surprised how little uh, calculations there were in the exam. There's not too many calculations. Um, a lot of the stuff is uh, theory based and understanding based. Okay. Um, Kaya provides an online paper which they say is available end of October, so you should be able to get access to that. Your MCQs, just like level one, was three or four possible answers, ABCs, or ABC, and perhaps a D as well. What's our pass mark? Well, 70% will guarantee you a pass mark, okay, um, but it could be lower than that 
as well. Okay, I'm sure as you guys are all aware, okay, the the pass uh, the pass mark, the, uh, the sorry the pass rate for Kai level one was of course quite low. If memory serves, I think it was 52% for Kai level one, which is quite equatable. And look at this, guys, it was, it's quite equatable um, with a 54% from last semester for the March semester. What was the Kai level two pass rate for March? Look at this. Okay, it was 81%. So now that you've made it to Kai level two, your chances of passing are that much more. Kai level one, they're looking to, okay, I don't know how to say it in a, in a kind way, but they're looking to get rid of some of the guys and make the pass, make the, the numbers a little bit more manageable. But once you're there, okay, uh, the pass rates are that much higher. Where do you get your results? Why for level one is it three weeks after, and level two at six weeks after the exam window closes? That's of course because they've got to be marking constructed response. Takes them a little bit longer. Okay, and then you're going to phone me. Okay, it'll probably be uh, uh, end of April with the good news that you've passed Kai level two. Okay, and how do you then become a charter holder? Number one, you pass both exams okay um, and of course by now you, you you've got your your bachelor's degree whatever that happens to be to get you into the program okay you'll also need to abide by the candidate and member agreement okay nothing too onerous there you'll provide two professional references with pleasure I can help you with one of those okay and you'll submit your payments to the annual Kai Association for the membership fee then you are done Okay, then you will be completely bored and you'll phone me, you'll say, what else can we do? And I'll tell you to have a little bit of a break and then you could either start CFA if you don't, unless you have one already. We also offer FRM and some modeling programs as well. Okay, um, but, but my, my, my two cents worth is we keep studying, we keep, well, we keep growing. It doesn't have to be formal designations, but okay. And the last little bit that I want to just discuss in today's session, I'm going to hop across now to a more detailed, have a look at the syllabus over here. Okay, um, let's go. There we go. Okay, what I've done over here, guys, is, uh, and this this will be on your Google uh, uh, Classroom Pacer. Okay, um, it's first of all, it is a detailed list of every single uh, uh, topic, as well as the the, the chapters that, is, that 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 are associated with that particular topic. So, if you remember, guys, from uh, the, the 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 first uh, slide that I looked at. There we go. There's topic one, topic two, models, three, institutional asset owners, okay, four, risk and risk management, five, methods of alts, alts accessing alts is topic six, seven is due diligence and managers, eight is volatility and complex strategies, and nine was current and integrated topics. And I, I don't know if this was done purposefully, I'm sure it was, okay, um, but there's five chapters for each and every topic, okay. Um, so the work is the work is the work is much. There we go, far, 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 and of course for the very last one, which is current and integrated topics, there are eight, and that gives us a total of 48 chapters that we've got to get through. Okay, if you look over here on my extreme right hand side, I put the release dates, of course, guys, because I don't have all the information available right now because um, we, it's a brand new syllabus, so. Um, we will be drafting, um, uh, 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 releasing videos, uh, preparing questions, etc. As we go, okay, um, and not to knock any providers, you know, I never do that, but I did look at one of one or two other big providers in the Kaya space, and that. Not that they're that far behind, but they don't even have a release schedule out <laughs> as to when this stuff is coming. And I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying we're all under pressure, guys, so if you'll just bear with us, um, okay. Now, if you have a look at my release schedule, so the first topic, ethics, regulation, ESG, is going to come out on the 4th of November. That is next week, Wednesday, if you're listening to this video, okay. And what I've done, predominantly, I've gone one week by one week. So every week, we're going to get another five another topic and another five um, chapters. It's going to be grueling, guys, okay? But my two cents worth is please, if you could keep up as best you can, okay, 
to the questions, to the Kaya questions. I'll post those onto the Google Classroom as well and just keep pushing as hard as you can. You can see there's 4th of November, 11th of November, 18th of November, 25th, 2nd of December. And you'll notice over here we go, by the time we hit mid-December, okay, we have done seven of the nine topics. Okay, by the 16th of December, okay, um, and then we're going to take a little bit of a break. Now, for the South African guys, okay, who I'm quite sensitive to, okay, um, is generally speaking, that is when most of the families are taking a lot of leave from their work, holidays, the, the kiddies are on holidays, not so much so in, in the Americas and, and, and the other European countries, but less so. Um, but no matter what, where, uh, where you're from, or how much leave you've got, we will be taking a bit of a break on the 16th of December. Of course, I will be available still throughout the period. Okay, and um, we will release the final two topics: 13th of Jan and 20th of Jan. Okay. Having said that, um, if you are, and I hope you're not, but if you are a little bit behind, well, you've got this almost one month period when we break. Um, to try and catch yourself up. If you are ahead, if, you, or if you're on, on par with everyone, um, where we do, it'll be a lovely time for revision as well, and then come back in Jan and knock off the final two. Now, everyone says, is that enough time? Of course it's enough time, and how do I know that? Because all of the notes will be finished by the 21st of Jan, okay? Uh, current integrated topics, the, the release date is the 20th of Jan. Let's say, for example, you take a week, we can even until the end of Jan to finish that up yourselves. You will be done with all the ten, the nine topics by let's say the first February. And remember, your exam window is on the eighth of March. That gives you over a month for a complete revision of everything, as well as to go through. Um, we're going to be releasing between four and five exams as we normally do. There is the Kaya paper as well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so we, we are nicely on time. Um, unfortunately, I am your weakest link um, uh, in terms of I need to get those videos out and notes out on time. But those that were, that were with me for Kai Level 1 know that I, hopefully that I never disappointed and all the dates that were promised were adhered to and um, uh, we, 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 we will hopefully be in the same position. I can't see anything going too, too, too wrong in this area. Okay. Also keep in mind, guys, that I do have quite a lot of information as well. Um, for example, if you look at topic three, most of the stuff over here is old, so there's nothing too new there. So we've got a lot of information as well. Not all of it, of course, in terms of the 48 chapters, but we do have some, so it should not be, we should be quite comfortable in meeting these particular release dates as advertised. All right. On that note, I'm going to be leaving you guys. That, that is the end of the introductory video. Come the 4th of November, please be ready for me. If by the 4th of November, it'll be our first release date. Um, Ethics Regulation ESG will be coming through, and the end of the race and the run will begin. Okay, uh, so just the last point as well, guys. Um, hopefully, we'll be, uh, as we normally do, we'll be forming a, a WhatsApp group, uh, put all the, the, the guys together, uh, and be able to communicate with each other. Of course, guys, please, 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 you know my, my spiel by now. Um, when I form that WhatsApp group, please put alt stuff on only really guys or questions that you may have that the rest of the group can help you with. Um, uh, try and keep personal stuff off there. For example, if your cat has a baby, then we say huge congratulations to both you and the cat. Um, but please don't post too many pictures of the of that. Okay, guys, on that note, I'm going to love and leave everybody um, and looking forward to a very successful Kai Level 2 program and hearing the most wonderful news from you guys in April 2021 that we have a whole new group of Kaya Level 2 charter holders.